last time on Dice Funk. You guys are going to go into Sharp Investments, a 108-story skyscraper to secure data off of the company servers for yourself. Oh yeah, what card are we there to steal? <laughs> Avarice itself. Crit! I got his grenade! <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not going to be able to not press this button. Frank presses the button. We're in the video game. Which is General Heller. He is a, a cobra with a very impressive hood. And I'm going to like, as he walks, I'm going to shuffle. So like once he gets his back to the elevator, that's when my front is to the elevator. And I'm just going to like slink in real quick. I say we go for combo because it sounds like the most friendshipy one. This is essentially Exodia, is it? <laughs> Yeah, basically, you guys need to beat up this person before they finish assembling Exodia. Time to da, 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 duel! We did it, gang. We made it inside the computer. Everything is working. <laughs> I mean, listen, we, we got to establish the console wars because we have like the, the Q box and the Slay Station. I think the best thing I saw on Twitter this week was people pointing out that we were basically playing Hollow Deck in the Hollow Deck, <laughs> which made me very happy to realize. Ooh, is this going to be like one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! game spinoffs? So instead of a card game, it's like a real time strategy War of Three Kingdoms game. I mean, Ooh. you guys are actually going to be doing D&D combat for this arc, which means that the video game you're in does not strictly follow the card game rules. That's kind of like how the Yu-Gi-Oh! An <gasps> anime takes a lot of liberties. You're like in Knights of the Old Republic, <laughs> the Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Aren't you sad now that you're not in Knights of the Old Republic, the Yu-Gi-Oh! game? <laughs> Katarina's on her way. Yeah, she, she's on her way, and I think we're on our way to, to destroy whatever this thing is in front of us. I mean... It, it, I'm just not sure how this is going to pan out. I'm just excited to see what sort of hot mess our combat ends up being. It's going to be extremely hot. Before we start this second episode of this arc, though, I think this is a fun time capsule because while we're recording this card game-centric arc, uh, there's been a bunch of really big shakeups in card games in real life. Uh, Mon yep. Monster Reborn was just unbanned, I think. It's mm -hmm. restricted still, but it's now in Yu-Gi-Oh! again. And Jace the motherfucking Mind Sculptor just got unbanned <laughs> in Modern, which if that sentence doesn't mean anything to you, I realize it sounds like gibberish, Hi. but it is... It's unthinkable. Card that people assumed would never be playable is for some reason now playable and people are losing their minds. Sure. And Corridor Creeper is now a 2-5 since we're just talking about nerfs and changes. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm contributing. I thought you were going to give us some more like Garfield facts, you know? <laughs> oh, well, I had a list of Garfield book names, but it's passed. Uh... Y'all are talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, but the only reference I have for what's happening right now is the Scooby-Doo made for TV movie, Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Uh, that is exactly what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of all of you. At least it's not Shaggy Scooby Get a Clue, which is like the most amazing hot garbage that they ever had going for it. Y'all remember all with the cat zombies? Yes. That was, was a good one. That was a good one too, yes. All right, so on the last episode of this adventure, Katarina slipped into the executive elevator during the shift change between the military and the security for the building, going down to the basement to catch up to her friends. Uh, that's actually where we're going to start. Right now, Katarina, Kraken, Bane, Brooks, you're in the elevator. It's going down. On the way there, are you doing anything, thinking about anything? How are you? Because you just accomplished your goal, but you were spotted, and that's not great. Uh, so she's going to be in the elevator doing some light stretches mm -hmm. so that the moment the elevator door is open, she can sp like sprint away and hopefully using her innate better speed than other people. She will be so fast and everyone's going to be like, man, that elevator just had a ghost inside of it. We were chasing nothing and they'll go about their days. I love that mental image because what happens is the elevator is going down and it's just like the light music dun, 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 and you're like stretching and then it gets to the bottom and the doors don't open. <laughs> oh, no. The light inside the elevator turns blood red. Uh. And your phone buzzes. And you have a text from Wendy, which says, OMG, they're evacuating the building? Question uh, mark. I will text back, 
Do you know why? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy responds, some security thing? I'm stuck in the elevator. I'm not going to say which one. But I'm just going to say the elevator. <laughs> Is there a way to open them all? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy responds, IDK, lol. <laughs> She doesn't know she because that's not her uh, specialty. She's not an electrician or an electrical engineer or anything. But you assume there is. But also, you all you think the elevator got to the basement. All right. Like it, it got down there. The doors just aren't opening because there's some kind of security override. Uh, can I wedge my harpoon in between the door and try to like pry it open? Oh, I hope you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do I need a check for that, or is it just my good looks that gets me through? Oh, it's a strength check. Damn. All right. Uh, seven. Ooh. Mm. Those gains were not sick. <laughs> so you reach into your infinite pocket, pull out your harpoon, which is like a tiny little cylinder, and you give it a, a flick of the wrist, and it telescopes out, and then you try to use it as a crowbar to open the door, and you open up the first part. It's actually two sets of doors. Um, the way That's just the way the elevator doors work. And you get the first one, but you can't quite get the second one. Uh, I mean, if I just hit the door open button, does it work? <laughs> no, it's just, they shut down the elevator specifically because someone saw an unauthorized person getting in the executive elevator that goes to uh, the most secure place in the entire city. <laughs> so I don't think it's that too much of a stretch to think they don't want you getting out of this elevator. Okay, can I throw the grenade at the door? <laughs> <laughs> What about you? What about no, no, yourself? No, 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 no. You specifically did say pull the pin and throw the grenade. Just <laughs> throw the grenade. I just assumed that was a joke suggestion because you will die. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, can I try to pry open the second door? But this time I like wedged the harpoon in so it like it's sticking there. Instead of using my arm strength, I want to kick off the side of the elevator and drop kick it and try to open it that way. All right, so it sounds like you want to do athletics to incorporate some of your wrestling moves into this to really uh, give it the business. I got a 14. Can you describe one more time? Paint this picture for me because you do it. So I want to jam my harpoon into the door so it's like it's it's stuck in there and it can hold itself straight out without my supporting it. And then I want to like run to one side of the elevator, jump onto it, kick off of it, and then while in midair, drop kick the, the harpoon and pry it open that way. Because it's silly world and physics can work like this. Yeah, I can't quite f picture the geometry of all this, but <laughs> I'm not a math major, so. I drop kick my harpoon. Yeah, it wrenches. It's just enough force that you force the doors open. And because the motor's turned off the, uh, to close and open it, it just doesn't reclose. And the door is open and you can go now. You have essentially just overwhelmed the mechanism that was keeping it closed. Um, you see what the rest of the party saw. Each side of you, there are just servers and servers and servers, rows after row after row, and encased in like glass walls with security access there. But at the end of the hallway, there is a door marked private. Uh, does it look like it's a jar at all? Yeah, I think they left it open. All right. Yeah, I'll go inside. That seems logical. All right. So you just walk down the hallway. You pick up your harpoon, I assume. Mm -hmm. You just walk into the private room. And as soon as you cross the threshold, because this entire room is rigged for what I've decided to call magical reality, as opposed to virtual reality or augmented reality, um, you were just immediately disintegrated as you walk into the room because it's on. It's no longer in sleep mode. So you just enter the magical reality as you enter the room. You have no context for any of this. You're just walking <laughs> and suddenly you are teleported <laughs> pixel by pixel into a throne room. Uh, you see uh, Algernon Sharp, who you do not know, on a throne. There's just m this Medusa guy and he's uh, talking into a monitor. He's like, fuck you, friend. Frank, I'll boop your ass, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. And you just fall out of the sky and into the open trap door that he left open. <laughs> and you just see this as you're falling. And he turns, you guys see this too, because you're, you're bantering with Algernon. And you see him just turn and look to the left real quick. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> anyway, Frank, eat my dirty socks, motherfucker. <laughs> Katarina, you fall through the trap door into the dungeon room with the three doors. You just slam into the stone pedestal in the middle of the room uh once again still no context for where you are or what's going on 
Uh, you can shakily get to your feet. You see three doors, one marked aggro, one marked control, and one marked combo. Aggro, aggro, aggro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have no context for these things, but one of those things sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, one of them sounds cool as hell. And you just rush off towards the aggro door. It, it doesn't even finish opening by the time you get there. You almost <laughs> fucking crash the game because it's trying to load. I like to think that the combo door is still swinging from them and turning it just a moment ago, but I still just like aggro. One, one of those doors is very Katarina. Yes. So let's cut back to the rest of the party. You guys have started your battle against Algernon Sharp. He has summoned the Mystic of Forged Stone. Uh, which is a woman in a monk's robe carrying a staff. Uh, Frank, you know what's up, but Algernon's going to explain it for the audience, uh, much the way that villains do in Yu-Gi-Oh! So the people at home know what's going on in the strategy card game. He says, And also me. Also Lauren. <laughs> he says, you know, the combo decks are decks which require certain pieces in your hand to cast to win the game on the spot. But the difficult part is getting all of the cards necessary into your hand, which can take a long time. But luckily, I have a card, Mystic of the Forged Stone, which has a special ability, which allows me to search my deck every turn for the combo piece I need, which means I've already signed your death warrant. So here's, here's the deal for you two. If we can kill that thing, we're good. We just got to kill that thing before he gets the bits that he needs to kill us. And just how many bits does he need? It depends on the combo. You guys don't know the combo he's going for yet. Last week, Laura correctly identified Exodia as the reference. That is definitely what I'm going for. Yeah. And Frank, you know, the Mystic of Forged Stone is a is the one of the weakest creatures possible on its face. It can barely do damage, can barely defend itself. It's nothing. But if it gets all the combo pieces, Algernon wins on the spot, no matter what else is happening. So let's roll initiative. 18. 12. 9. 10. No. First up is Frank, then Ed, then Algernon, then Lenora. Frank, your move. Okay, I'm going to open up with uh, Lightning Bolt, which is a third level spell, because I want to kill this thing as quick as I can. Um, Stroke of Lightning, 100 feet long, 5 feet wide. Uh, You've got to make a deck saving throw. One. Uh, negative one. <laughs> it's a two minus one. Okay, uh, so I do 8d6 damage. Too much. Too much. That's 38 damage. Holy shit. Nice. Holy Christ. <laughs> Algernon yells, lightning bolts OP. <laughs> <laughs> what format is this? This is why they only print shock. Lightning <laughs> strike at best. Well, see, here's, here's the thing, is when I was playing you at that local tournament, you know, I was having a bit of a mess around, but no, fuck you, I'm going to take this seriously now, bro. All right, uh, Frank, you do you have any flavor, or is it Lightning Bolt in Holodeck as well? Uh, I, I like the thought in Universe that this is like some kind of like Zeus-like god throwing throwing Thunderbolts down, this is here. Yeah, I don't know, what do we, what do we call the, the fake Lightning God here? Oh, I mean, the lightning god is dead. It would... Zapdos! Zapdos! <laughs> <laughs> I summoned Zapdos to throw down lightning bolts. <laughs> All right. So, Frank, you just absolutely cream this woman with a lightning bolt. Uh, it almost kills her in one shot. Absolutely brutal. Ed, it's your turn. Ed is going to run on in while drawing out a dagger in one hand and his uh, pistol in the other. Ed will run, run in close enough to the mystic twirl the dagger in one hand and then stab at her while casting Booming Blade. The Booming Blade spell requires he makes an attack roll with a melee weapon, so that's going to happen right here. 12. Does that hit DC? Uh, yes, it does. So the damage is going to be D4 plus 4 plus D8. The last D8 is uh, thunder damage, actually. Uh, because basically, as he strikes, there's sort of a crack of thunder as the blade hits. And also, it says 11 damage, and then as it does so, Ed also blinks away and appears 20 feet backwards from where he stood as part of the attack. So you did 11 damage? I did 11 damage, and if the Mystic moves willingly before the start of my next turn, it takes an additional 2d8 thunder damage as is enshrouded in a field of thunder that's about to unleash 
The math on this is absolutely bananas because it is now Algernon's turn. You guys have done 49 damage <laughs> and it, she had 50 health. And so I'm going to get a turn, which is fun and exciting. <laughs> um, the mystic of forged stone plunges her staff into the ground in front of her, uh, activating its special ability. Algernon searches his deck for another card and he plays it. He, he actually laughs when he looks at the card. He says, I was planning to ramp into this, but I guess we're just in it now, huh, Frank? Yeah, well, see, here's the thing. I used to run this same deck, so I know what's coming. Go on, do your worst. He slams down the armor of unity, one of the pieces of the form of unity. The combo is unity itself, mm. one of the super rare banned in many formats form cards and when you get every piece of unity you win and this card he has played materializes a suit of chest armor which magically attaches itself to the mystic so it restores hit points and raises its ac making her tougher and she so she can survive more turns to get more pieces of the combo out and then with her bonus action she's going to focus and uh, take a defensive stance because she can't move without exploding into thunder because of Ed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you guys did a ton of damage. Luckily, I, I'm making her tougher every turn. So, Lauren, it's your turn. Or Lenora, rather. All right. I'm going to try to mind Spaker. Rude. Uh, wisdom saving throw. 13. Nope. No, ma'am. Oh, my mind. <laughs> All right. So that's 48. Please, no, Spike. <laughs> Gotta spike fast. 21, bitch. 21 damage? <laughs> American? <laughs> is that metric damage? <laughs> Yikes. All right. So I th this is actually represented in game. It's just like a huge s psychic spear gets, gets blasted through her <laughs> dome and she like grabs her head. She's a card game character, but she has pain animations because <laughs> Algernon modded this game and he's a sicko. Um, and but luckily I, re I restored my HP last turn, so she doesn't die on the spot like she would have. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in that case, I'm gonna throw out a toll the dead. Fifteen whiz save. Seven. Two d twelve necrotic. Uh, five necrotic damage. Not as not as much as I had hoped. An evil bell tolls, and the the mystic. Of forged stone actually crumbles to dust before you, and the armor clanks to the ground. Algernon, you really thought you were going to take me down with the deck I used to run back in, back in the old days, really? Hey, this is one of the pre-made decks that comes with the game. This isn't mine. Don't put that evil on me. You, you want to know why they pre why that how that deck became a pre-built deck? It's because I was so good at using it in tournaments. They made a pre-built out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what's funny about this? Because I've been, this is like a real deep lore thing, but I've been thinking of Frank in terms of Magic the Gathering's history. There was someone early in the game uh, named Paul Sly, S-L-I-G-H, mm. who was like a really important early figure. There was a deck named after him. Yeah. But I went to look up how, what he's doing these days and like there's nothing like he disappeared he has no wikipedia page i literally don't know what happened to the person they're not no joke some someone brought it brought him up to me very early on in this season i was like mm, i'm very i'm very into leaning into this like my reference point is Yu-Gi-Oh, but i'm very into this this magic person oh can we can we all be magic people <laughs> <laughs> uh ought to be kibler thank you for chiming in chris because they just killed the mystic of forged stone let's cut over to your door Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, they're they're fighting in a gladiatorial arena, as I mentioned last episode. It's not super important for the setting. It's just one of the. It's a from an episode of the anime where you guys fight, where, where the protagonist fights someone on a chariot. It's real goofy. Um, when you walk through the aggro door, you find yourself loaded into a level that is a stone bridge uh, over a pit of lava, going to a castle. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the holodeck show in universe, but no. this is like the, the big climactic fight before the final boss where you have to overcome the guy guarding the bridge to the castle. And it ends with the person getting, uh, beaten at cards so badly. They fall off the bridge and into the lava and die. Mm. It's real dark. It actually got censored in some regions. <laughs> yeah. You don't actually die by falling into the lava. The lava just sends you to the shady place. Yeah, in the American version, he's like, oh, I'm going to take a jello nap. <laughs> and then <laughs> they cut away. Um, but so you're on this bridge over this river of lava, and uh, you see this big jumbotron in front of you. 
and it takes a while for anything to happen. You're just standing there on this bridge waiting, <laughs> and then all of a sudden uh, it clicks on, and it's Algernon. And he, the way this is happening in the timelines is you guys just killed the Mystic of Forge Stone, and then Algernon goes, "Wait, hold on, Frank, hold on. I got a, I got someone on the other line. I'll be right back." <laughs> and it clicks over to the other Jumbotron. It says, "Who the hell are you?" Uh, my name's Brody Monk. Where, where, where is this nerd place? <laughs> what are you doing in my room? What is your room doing? Is, is this where I, the computers are? Oh my god, are you Frank's friend? <laughs> I, I don't know Frank. I'm Brody Monk. He's a different person. <laughs> Algernon clicks back over to the, the gladiatorial arena. Hey, are you guys, you said you're missing your fourth person. Is it someone who sounds like they're slowly being choked to death? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yes. Yep, that's good old Brody. <laughs> <laughs> well, best friend Brody, he's, he's, he's Brody-licious. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll be right back, Frank. I'm going to kill your friend real quick, and then we can finish this game. And then he clicks. No! In, <laughs> and then he clicks over back to Katarina. Bridge over River of Lava, Algernon says. All right, Brody, I don't know what your deal is. You seem extraordinarily strange, but I'm going to kill you now. Are you ready? What is this? Why is your face made of snakes with sunglasses? Well, now you're just being racist, which is... (laughs) Okay, I see from here. This looks like a really big nerd room. All right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Jesus. Algernon says, enough of this, and he throws down a card and shouts... Penguin Paladin and a big penguin in a suit of knight's armor riding a tiny pony appears at the other end of the bridge and the penguin paladin has a long uh, comically sharp lance and he begins riding across the bridge towards you roll initiative eight eighteen all right the penguin paladin is going to stab you with its lance here comes the first attack 24 second attack 13 13 misses, but the 24 slightly hits. Slightly. Oh, he's so strong. Six damage as the Penguin Paladin stabs you. Your turn. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into a rage. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to pull out my handgun. I'm going to shoot the Penguin in the face. (laughs) (laughs) Crit! Crit! I blew the Penguin's head off! Roll damage. <laughs> 25. All right. You take the penguin's head clean off his shoulders <laughs> and this body and the cute little Shetland pony he was riding disintegrate. Aww. Um, Algernon says, no matter. It's an aggro deck. It's creatures, creatures, and more creatures. Creatures until you, you can't stand them. Cre- more creatures than your body has room for. Here we go. I play Bugbear Buccaneer. <laughs> On the other end of the bridge (laughs) appears a big fuzzy creature called a bugbear. It's roughly between a goblin and an orc. Um, Kind of like a Bigfoot, but mean. Um, But he's dressed up like a pirate. He has a tricorder hat. He has a parrot on his shoulder. He has a cutlass. And he's like, Yar, I be here to bugbear ye booty. (laughs) (laughs) And he takes a slash at you with his cutlass. Twelve. That's a miss. All right, your turn. I'm going to not shoot him with the gun this time because I want to save some bullets. So instead, I'm going to attack him twice. So 12 and another crit. (laughs) Holy Christ. (laughs) The crit hits, 12 does not. 13 damage. Describe it because he's an aggro creature. They're notoriously low health. So I want it to like, it's coming towards you with its cutlass. And like right before he'd go in, I just take up almost like a boxing stance and just give like a quick jab to the face. Like right before the sword gets in, it just explodes to its face as it all digitizes (laughs) away. Yeah, exactly. You punch his face off and it turns into pixels and floats away. Pretty fun. This is a good workout. Get, getting a good warm-up going here. <laughs> Do you got anything that's not lame that you can send out? What's, what's up with that? Algernon seems flustered. He says, all these pre-made decks, nothing but draft commons. Chaff. Chaff, I say. <laughs> and he throws down another card and he says, this time you have to face Undertaker Orc. And at the end of the bridge, you see uh, a pretty stereotypical orc, uh, a green-skinned, large humanoid with tusks, dragging a tombstone behind him, which he scrapes across the ground as he walks over to you to hit you with it. You mean he's not just like the wrestler, the undertaker? In my mind, he is. 
I I was wondering if this was an anime card game crossover, like with the, the you know this is just like a wrestling tie in they did. Yeah, but same here. Except it's the American badass version of the Undertaker, so he just wears a leather vest around and has his wife's name tattooed on his neck. <laughs> it's a Hearthstone joke. Is oh yeah, Undertaker. He was crazy broken when he came out. So, yep, every single thing I've said this episode has been a reference. <laughs> I I actually thought at first when you said it, I was like. That's pirate aggro that's coming at me now with the buccaneer. <laughs> and that first one's Murloc Paladin, isn't it? A uh, crit and 22, motherfucker. Bring it. All right, that's a lot of fucking damage, dude. You didn't summon any death rattles. He can't be strong yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 20 damage as he Oof. wails on you with a tombstone. So 10 damage because I'm raging. Algernon's like, mm, didn't account for that. <laughs> uh, 10 and 26. 26 hits. It's a 19, natural 19 there. So you got three attacks so far with a 20, a 20, and a 19 there. It's fantastic. 10 damage. All right. You hit the Undertaker Orc uh, with, with your fist. Yeah. Yeah. I uppercut him. All right. So, so this j- hulking pig man with a gravestone is wailing on you and you're just hitting him with your bare fist. Hold on. Wait. Can I, can I reflame? Is he dead? No. Oh, all right. I'm going to wait then. They're getting stronger, Brody. That's how a, a, an aggro mana curve works. Brody. I don't know. Is that computer talk? What are you talking about? <laughs> is this a computer? Uh, 11 and another crit. This is the fourth crit this episode. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's a real, there's a real drag out fight over here. <laughs> 18 damage. Okay. All right. He slams you in the face again with the tombstone. You guys are just on this bridge over a river of lava, just slugging each other. And Algernon's like, why won't she die? 14 and 27? Uh, 27 hits or 24, I think. Uh, Eight damage. Yep. You got him. Okay. So this time I want him to be lifting up his giant tombstone to crush me with it. But then I do the Johnny Cage, like, split-legged ball punch, <laughs> and then it hits him there, and he drops the tombstone on his own self and crushes himself underneath. Absolutely. <laughs> Sweet. It turns his own head into beef, beef stroganoff. <laughs> um, all right, if you can beat this, I'm just going to concede, because this deck sucks. Here, um... <laughs> <laughs> Face Hunter Ogre. <gasps> And he plays, uh, and Ogre is, of course, the biggest of the, the the stereotypical evil races in D&D. So you have goblins, the smallest, then bugbear, hobgoblin, orc, and then Ogre is, uh, you know, a huge hulking monster. This one, though, has a flayed human face it wears as a mask. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and it has a big butcher's knife, a big cleaver it carries. Just something casual to wear to the office. <laughs> um, and it's coming at you, cat. Go for it. Attack, attack. Eight, eight. Come on. <laughs> Both misses. He's just too <laughs> slow and lumbering. He's just not going to get a hit in. Uh, all right. I'm going to use a key point to attack. Uh, use a second flurry of blows then. So 24, 20, and 18. All three hit. My word. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, 24 damage. Sweet Christmas. Yeah, I mean. Uh, mm. If if one of us was going to have to take on one of these rooms solo, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the the barbarian mug combo works really well with the stacked uh, static modifiers to damage and resistance to non uh to damage types. So those are just great. Plus great. I have a gun. <laughs> Plus you have a gun. You do it's have a the gun. barbarian monk with a gun, which sounds like a great exploitation <laughs> film title, honestly. How much health do you have? <laughs> uh twenty seven. Oh, okay. May, okay. This might be the last attack he gets, but you're within range, I think. Attack, attack. 23 and 14. Uh, both hit. Oh, no. Oh, 10 damage. Bad roll. Thank goodness, because remember, if you die in the game, you die in real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The face hunter ogre takes a, a nip off you, cat, but does not cleave your head clean in half like I was hoping. Your turn. Uh, 21. Hits. Seven damage, minimum damage. Paint me a picture. Can I punch him so hard that the only thing that's... Oh, wait, no, I want a Kano victory. I want to punch him through the heart and grab his heart out, and it digitizes away in my palm. (laughs) Okay, as the face hunter ogre dies, it says, It's a bit excessive, don't you think? (laughs) And it falls off the bridge and into the lava. (laughs) (laughs) I did! I beat your computer game! Algernon just goes, 
Oh, whatever, I'll see you later, bye. <laughs> Wait, where do I go? Where's the modem? <laughs> Where's the modem? <laughs> the room just falls apart around you, Cat, as it uh, unloads, basically, and kicks you back to the lobby in the middle. But let's cut back to the other party. You guys have just defeated the Mystic of Forge Stone, but the armor's still in the ground, and the battle doesn't seem to be over. Uh, Algernon appears back on the Jumbotron in front of you. Uh, Frank, before anything else is going to happen, wants to grab that armor and try and put it on. All right. As you walk over to it, Algernon says, Wow, Frank, really? I was trying to kill your friend and you're just going to take advantage? Just real poor sportsmanship. Hey, hey, Brody don't need no help. Brody's got some sick gains. It's all good. Brody might not need help, but you're going to because you've walked right into my trap, fool. Oh, no. Ah. You think I'm really going to run a combo deck without any recursion? You goof ass. Yeah, I did think you were going to do that because you kind of (laughs) suck. You know what doesn't suck? Bringing back Mystic of the Forged Stone from the graveyard, homie. (laughs) (laughs) While he's doing his speech, Frank is still going and picking up the armor to just put it on. Um, Yeah, I mean, you're trying to, but inside the armor, the creature is regenerating because he's casting uh, Creature Revival on it. Let me, uh, I want to see if I can do something about that. There's something I think I can do. Um, I don't know if a counter spell would be would counter spell be applicable yeah. here. Counter spell is what I'm looking at quickly. So, uh, creature within sixty feet is casting a spell. I can do that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to activate my trap card. Counter spell. <laughs> he tries to cast creature revival, and you counter it. And the armor, which was filling up with the regenerating mystic, falls back to the ground as the spell fizzles, and it lands at your feet, and then it disintegrates because Algernon. Concedes. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You thought you were going to get me with just a trap card, did you? Huh? 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 I got trap cards too, you know, you shit. <laughs> a p- true professional knows when to scoop. That's the first thing you learn when you actually take the game seriously, Frank. I can't do my combo. I'm out. See you back in the lobby, homie. See you, I guess. Yeah, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are booted back to the dungeon room. Shortly after Cat, who is wandering around, Cat, uh, you're there first because you just <laughs> tore through those fucking guys on that bridge. What's up? I want to try to like she's like if I go back there to see her, she keeps trying to open the aggro door because it was fun to punch things apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the the UI just has a big green check mark because you already beat the level and it's not letting you in, and you're just like, no. screw you, check mark. I want to punch that penguin's face off again. <laughs> <laughs> he blew his face off with a gun. <laughs> It was savage. You guys all know when you move back up that you have all your spell slots back and you're all at full health because this oh, is oh thank God because this is simulating a card game and things don't carry over from game to game. All your life points in your deck revive and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, the the game is not programmed to give you back your bullets. It does not Damn it. expect that. So no, <laughs> it didn't expect me to use my gun. <laughs> no, it actually didn't. It super didn't. Jeff Kaplan, please nerf. <laughs> <laughs> Cap Brody, um, how 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 you doing? Oh yeah, hey Wes, what's up, guys? What's uh, what's going on? Looks like we have one more door left to deal with here. Wait, what is this? Is this a computer? Is this where we're supposed to find the computer stuff? Here's 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 the deal. Um, you know how I play that 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 card game, and you know that's that's my whole deal. Yeah. We're in the video game for the card game, and my rival is the one who put us here. Except, well, we kind of put ourselves here, but he's the one ruling everything. And if we are not the best at this card game, video game, we will die. It's it's one of those die in in the game, die for real situations. Wait a minute. Are you saying I'm playing a nerd game? Yes. You're playing a nerd game. It seems so cool before. And apparently you did pretty well because you got through one of those rooms by yourself. So well done you. You are, you are good at nerd games. Do you shoot penguins in the faces in this game usually? Because my opinion on it will change greatly if that's the case. Um, If by that you mean summon a monster in a card that, that its attack is flavored as doing that, then yes. All right. Maybe it's a little cooler than I thought. Either way, I want to go shoot some more things. <laughs> So, just an out of ca- out of canon question: Have we just lost Katarina as a character now? Are, are we? Do we just have Brody? Because I'm totally up for Brody as the new character. I've gone too deep. <laughs> I don't know how much 
second longer, I can live with that accent, though. I don't like I lost in the character. You never know how much mom might be listening. I only catch, like, every other word. I guess it's like a respect <laughs> question. It's like, should should we be referring to you as Cat or Brody now? Like, how how much do we just go, like, this is you now in character? In in character, you should recognize it's still Cat. Out of character, you do what you want. Uh, I, 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 Ed's M.O. is like, if... Someone presents an alias for themselves, Ed will immediately call them by that alias from that point forward um, to maintain the facade as well as he can, so. Considering we're on a heist, that's a really good call. Cat just makes really shitty disguises for herself when she goes on missions. <laughs> I like the fact that this is, you're just that deep undercover in this disguise. <laughs> Gotta stay true to that character, yeah. yo. Um, so yeah, we have one door remaining. All right, you guys open the control door. Um, you walk in. This one is actually a uh, cherry blossom filled field. This is the scene from the anime where the love interest confesses to the protagonist. It's very heart wrenching. It's where all the fan art is of really this scene. It's a it's a fan favorite. Um, in this field, there is just a weird floating jumbotron though, <laughs> which kind of breaks the mood. But you guys are in this uh, idyllic Japanese style field. Oh. Algernon, Algernon, I did not know you felt this way about me. <laughs> <laughs> Will Senpai finally notice us here? Oh my god. All right. <laughs> so apparently you guys are trying to annoy me to death. <laughs> Is that the new meta? <laughs> I, I like to picture that Ed just walking in, kind of going like all CQC with the pistol and knife, kind of like, you know, Solid Snake just looking for any particular threat in the area. It's 100% the end of Snake Eater. I just thought that was less accessible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is what is happening right now. Um, so uh, let's just get into it. Algernon starts. He says, so Frank, as you know, a control deck is about denying the opponent their game plan and making the game as go as long as possible so that you can get as many resources to finish the game when you're good and ready. So... I'm going to put, let you guys go on the offensive, and I'm going to start by playing Swords of Concealing Darkness. And swords, giant black swords rain out of the sky and slam into the ground in a circle. And in the middle of these swords, there is an impermeable black mist that you cannot see inside. And Algernon plays another card, which summons a creature inside that dark mist, but you do not know what it is, uh, which limits your ability to plan to fight it. So I got 13... Four. Yikes. We got 19. Seven. Seven. Lenora, your turn. All right. Uh, in the area where he put his little mysterious shroud where he's hiding his, his dudes, I'm going to cast Hunger of Hadar. Um, all right. So you raise up your MP3 player to turn it to the Hunger of Hadar station. And Algernon says, not so fast. No, I'm so excited. <laughs> this is a control deck, motherfucker, which means it's nothing but counter spells. Oh. I play permission denied. <laughs> Next turn. Oh, that's such a bitch. <laughs> oh. I was going to be so good. Wait, wait, can I counter spell the counter spell? <laughs> yes, you absolutely can. Okay. That's, hey, <laughs> now we play in legacy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Frank counter spells the counter spell. All right, I play Force of Will. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that um, deep, deep lore. Deep, deep lore. No, nope, okay, so Hunger of Hadar goes through. Okay, so any creature who starts their turn in the area takes 2d6 cold damage, and any creature that ends their turn in the area must make a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 acid damage by Milky Tentacles. All right, so on Algernon's turn, he will have to contend with Milky Tentacles. In the meantime, Renee, Eddie, your turn. Uh, Ed is going to try to do a reprisal of his last tactic by basically... Moving into the mist where the entity is that he's going to be trying to hit with uh, Booming Blade Lever just on its here. Disadvantage, needless to say. 18. Wow! All right, so Rene Eddy runs into the dark cloud inside of the Black Swords, and he runs almost smack into his enemy, which he successfully stabs. You see the creature before you, which is a wizard a uh, pretty stereotypically dressed person in like purple wizard robes. Uh, and they are the very spitting image of a anime magician, except that their head, their entire head is a clock face. It's the time wizard. Just, just say, is it time wizard? Algernon says, uh, actually, in, it's the dastardly clock-o-mancer. <laughs> <Nerd. laughs> 
Looks like your time's going to be up soon enough. <laughs> so that would be D4 plus D8 plus D plus 4. You're staying in the in the, the little zone? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't get out because I don't have enough movement to get in and then back out again out of range there. Oh, no. So uh, that plays nine damage and it enshrouds the time wizard in a four so that if it moves willingly, it'll take a bonus 2d8 thunder damage on its turn. At that point... I have to do the dex saving throw, correct? Uh, the dexterity is when you end your turn in the area. All right, so I'm going to do the dex saving throw for me, which is plus seven. So hopefully I succeed. What is the uh, ch- what's the check against 15? Yeah, 15. Eight. Oh, I, I botched in that one there. Oh, no. At least it's only, only 2d6. Three. Go me. Sorry, bud. That's okay. Also, not just tentacles. I just want to read this for flavor. The void is filled with a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises. (laughs) It just sounds like a dog licking itself. This podcast just got erotic. (laughs) Frank, it's your turn. You just saw Rene Eddy run into the cloud of darkness and you heard slurping noises (laughs) as he disappeared. So I'm going to try and avoid having Frank go in there. Um, I'm going to try casting Suggestion. Uh, so wisdom save versus 15? 18 save. Okay, okay, he does not take my reasonable suggestion that he should just, you know, walk outside of that dark area, you know, get, get a bit of sunlight. It's good for the vitamin D. It'll help you feel better. All right, Katarina, it's your turn. Uh, I want to create my water whips and I want to try to wrap up the clock thingy that I can't see yet in the water whips, though, but it's a dexterity saving throw. To beat a 15. I think I'm I'm actually going to get advantage because you can't see me. Mm. (laughs) Eight. (laughs) What in the good gracious? All right. So I love this. Uh, Ed, you're in this darkness with this clock wizard. You're trying to stab him with your knife. There are milky tentacles slapping everyone around in here. And all of a sudden, (laughs) more tentacles enter the fray (laughs) from the side. And they just start wiggling around in here. It's an absolute tentacle fiesta it is the quinceanera only for tentacles and it wraps around the wizard and you just see him looking you dead in the face with his little clock eyes as he's sucked out <laughs> it's like a horror movie you're just like you're like someone just got grabbed by the xenomorph <laughs> it is 16 damage then and i could choose to either pull him closer to me or knock him prone and i want to pull him closer but that would uh like take away from our synergy of having him in a milky tentacle slurping mess. <laughs> so he still, so he stays milky. Yeah, like we. What? <laughs> what are what? we talking about? What is this? What is this even? Okay. Are we all high? I've been thinking that this whole this whole arc. I've been like, am I just like really high? Because this is great. This is my influence. You're welcome. Thank you. So the the dastardly Clockomancer <laughs> uses his action to stand up, so he's not prone anymore. Oh, gotta roll that damage. He started his turn. Oh yeah, you, roll it for me. Four. Aw, he he gets a light tickle. Aw, he's, he's he needs a sweater. He's kind of chilly. So Algernon's gonna make a bold play. The dastardly Clockomancer exits the darkness and the tentacles, triggering uh, Ed's thunder trap. Seven damage. So that was from Booming Blade, right? So there's just like a basic, uh, a concussive blast? Yeah, there's a basically like a, a crack of thunder um, as he begins to move. And is he di- he's not disengaging, so I get an opportunity attack against him. Yeah. Disadvantage still? Yeah, it's still in the darkness. 18. Wow, yes. It's just going to be D4 plus 4 because I don't even have it. I don't have advantage on this thing. So it's just 5 damage, but it's a nice rider. So basically, like, as he comes, like, Edge just stabs him in the back. <laughs> All right, so you guys just see this, uh, (laughs) you guys see this becloaked wizard with a clock for a head stumble out of the darkness, getting stabbed in the back, slapped on the butt with milky tentacles. Uh, He just explodes for no reason. (laughs) He stumbles out of this cloud and into the open where you guys can get at him. But then Algernon's going to play another card. He is going to play Frank's favorite, Change of Will. Oh, because you're Bakara. Okay, uh, Fr- Frank is going to use his other counterspell here. So he's going to activate his his second counterspell trap card. So he attempts to take over one of your minds to get the party members to fight, but you're going to blow your other counterspell, and yep. the spell fizzles, and it is now Lenora's turn. He left my tentacles? It, it cost him dearly. He got stabbed in the back. He got spanked. 
Okay, what do I want to do to him? Um, I'm starting to feel like sad about this because I'm picturing him adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm picturing him very much like the Yu-Gi-Oh time wizard who's just like this really cute little chubby face. Just a little guy. Clock wizard. I mean, you already let Chris murder a penguin riding a pony, so <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. What's what's really going on here is Time Wizard on Dark Magician's body. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Okay, I'm going to try and mind spike him because that's my strongest damage. Oh, everybody be spiking. It's good. Uh, eight! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I failed like three different saving throws at, with a score of eight. But yep, uh, the dastardly Clockomancer fails again. Spike him. 14. Oh, no. Uh, you see, once again, this like purple spike of energy blast through his head, and he uh, reacts it with a pained animation that seems too detailed for the people who developed this game. Suck on that spike. Ed, it's your turn. I think you're still in the milky zone. Yep. So to roll the 2d6 for the damage. Seven. All right. Ed, Ed sort of kind of tracks kind of where the Dark Wizard sort of stepped out. And he's going to dive forward to do a nice, you know, clean-looking diving roll, rise up, and then attempt to just sort of do a clean slash up at the wizard while also in casting Booming Blade once again. Uh, it's just a very consistent source. And he misses on his attack, leaving Ed adjacent to the wizard. All right, Frank, it's your turn. Okay, for Frank's turn, he is going to try and use... I uh, can't use my big damage spells because... I use those up doing my counter spells. Gonna try uh, the bell tolls for thee again. So that is a wisdom save, is it? 11, fail. That That is not good enough. Uh, I think for a wizard of time, he'd be a little more wise. <laughs> uh, 13 damage. Rough. Katarina, your turn. The, the clockomancer does not look good. I want to run up and kick it in the face. <laughs> All right, hold on before you roll. Or you already rolled, huh? <laughs> do it. Do it. Um, yeah, I'm going to use a, a instant interrupt trap card. Algernon plays Coercive Command, a counterspell for attacks. So you are going to deal that damage to yourself. Okay, then the first one misses, but the second one hits. All right. Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> Ten. So, Katarina, you go to punch the Time Wizard and a magical mirror image of you appears and kicks you in the mouth as you go to kick the time wizard. <laughs> oh, well, fuck. That's awesome. That's what it feels like. I'm fucking bam. <laughs> but that's a two-part spell. The other is Algernon gets to draw a card. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it is now, oh, it's my turn, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Algernon says, huh, you guys put up a pretty good fight, but you let this go on too long. Time was on my side. Nerd. Boo. I cast lightning bolt. Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity save. Is it against Frank? It's against Frank. 15. You fail. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Okay. How much am I getting hit for? 86. Okay. So Frank total has... Is that right? 20 HP? I mean, you are a wizard, so it makes sense. Okay, so that's 8d6. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. 32! <laughs> well, uh, the good news is that it doesn't kill you outright, because it had to do 40 <laughs> damage for it to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's enough to knock me unconscious considerably, though. The dastardly Clockomancer holds its hand aloft and summons a lightning bolt... Uh, very much like the one you used to fry the mystic of forged stone. It's a little bit of karmic yeah. justice. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same damage I did on the uh, on them too. And he f nukes you, Frank. Uh, just absolutely uh, explodes your whole scene. You take it f straight to the face and it blasts you off your feet and you go down smoking. It's a bad scene, guys. Frank is down. Dad! <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Lenora, your turn. Oh, boy, I'm me it now. <laughs> You're meowed. 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 <laughs> meowed. Meowed. You know, like, meow. Meow. That's fucking meowed. All right. I'm making decisions. Okay, while well, you're thinking, Lenora, Algernon starts taunting Frank's unconscious body. <laughs> Should have scooped it up when he had the chance. I'm going to try to hold the dead. <laughs> Give me a wisdom save, 
butt muncher. I don't know. Six. <laughs> Fuck off. 2d12. Necrotic. 22. 22. No way. 22. Yep. Vengeance is mine. <laughs> oh, my God. I will avenge you. I hope you're all ready for the friendship speech Frank is going to give when he wakes up. <laughs> All right, uh, for the second time this episode, a ghostly bell rings and one of Algernon's creatures crumbles away as the psychic damage shatters them. Algernon says, eh, you win some, you lose some, but I will always have electrocuted Frank until he pissed himself. So I think it's really a moral victory. Hey, hey, if you're going to make it canon that Frank pissed himself, at least give me a chance to roll to avoid that. (laughs) I mean, he's just being a dick, but if you want to establish, we can establish. I, I'm not sure I want to risk the did you wet yourself roll. That's a constitution saving throw if you're interested. <laughs> Do it. Fine. What is my constitution? I think it's the DC 10. Okay. <laughs> uh, constitution is, oh God, I have minus one constitution. <laughs> <laughs> one. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. None of us will say anything. We're, you're good. Who is my little pee boy? <laughs> Oh, no. Whoa. This episode was interesting. (laughs) Uh, Frank rolled a one. I'll head Frank my vest so he can use it as like a a shirt jacket thing around the belt. He's unconscious. I don't think it's going to help. All right. Well, I'll I'll lay it over (laughs) to protect your dignity in the moment. I mean, the level uh, falls apart as you guys are booted back to the lobby and you're brought back with full health and all your slots and everything, but uh, Algernon hacks into the code to make sure you don't unpee your pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to me, he says. <laughs> don't take this away from me. Yo, you got some problems, kid. <laughs> you know you know what? Here's, here's the thing, Algernon. I may have pissed myself, but at least I still have three friends stood by my side who fought by my side when I was unconscious. You've not won a single fight. Yeah, I think I've come out on top so far. All you have is sexy snake posters. Exactly. (laughs) I have friends who won't laugh until we're done with the heist about me pissing myself. We both know those victories didn't count. Those were stock decks. Come on up here and face a real duelist. Here's the thing. If you've got enough control over this world to to do what you've just done, you could have. We beat you. We beat you. All right. Enough talk. Have at you. <laughs> uh, the dais at the, in the center of the dungeon room begins to rise up out of the ground as you guys are all on this raising platform that's going back up to the throne room through the trap hatch. As you guys are rising up through the darkness, you have a few moments to collect yourself before you're face to face with your foe. Right. Before we get ready for this fight, here's here's one thing I want to do for all of you. This may seem to just be a card game of draw cards, do damage, win the game. But you know what's the most important part of this? And I learned this when I was doing this at tournament level. Is it friendship? It's friendship. (laughs) So... Before we go up there, before we do this, I want us to put together a bond of friendship that can never be broken. And Frank's going to get a marker oh. pen out of, his, <laughs> out, of, out of his pockets and be like, I want you all to put your hands in the middle here and we're, we're going to make it like, put all our hands together. I'm going to draw a wonderful symbol of friendship on our hands. <laughs> Is it a happy face? It's going to be a happy face. <laughs> Frank wants to draw a big old happy face in Mark Pen on everyone's hands. Okay. Uh, Ed does not let go of his knife in this process um, <laughs> because he just does not fucking trust Aldrinon. Katarina's going to put her hand in and say, oh, by the way, guys, I have a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friendship and grenades. Best combo for card capes. Lenora's gonna offer Frank her skirt so it doesn't look like he peed himself. Uh, Frank is gonna wear that skirt with pride. <laughs> I have shorts underneath. It's cool. It's cool. Frank Frank is gonna very, very proudly wear that skirt. He's gonna rock it. <laughs> All right. The platform reaches the throne room and you see Algernon get up off the throne. He picks up his deck and he says, so obviously we're gonna duel for pride and so you can actually say who wins between the two of us, but I've had a lot of time to think while you were in there pissing yourself. And I think it'd be fun if we added, you know, a little spice, something to make this battle unforgettable. 
Oh, I've been thinking about this the whole way up here. What have you got in mind? Uh, a simple wager. I don't know what you want. I can't possibly <laughs> see from the perspective of someone uh, as empty-headed as you, but what I would like is if I win, you quit Hollow Deck forever. Oh, not gonna lie. Saw this one coming, and <laughs> I have one, one dueling stipulation if I win. Anytime we duel... You've got to call me Sir Best Duelist. <laughs> Wait, so if you win, you just want him to have to give you a, a title? No, no, there's more stuff we want, but like, that's the dueling stipulation. You've got to call me fancy titles when we duel, and you know, you've got, you've got to be all, oh, Mr. Mr. Best Duelist. You get one request if you win. Use it wisely. We should get one per person because there's four of us. I mean, no offense. This is mostly going to be between me and Frank. I mean, did I or did I not just fuck up your whole shit? Yeah, I mean, you got lucky. Look, no, I'm rad, and you're not. It's cool. It's fine. I'm not the one saying this. It's just science. Girls aren't good at card games. Oh no, you did not. You did not. Here, some of my best people I've played card <laughs> games with have been women. Fuck you. Right. Well, no, I will remember that. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> if, we, if we're walking out of here with one thing, I'm taking avarice. And we're walking out of here uncontested. For the first time, basically, in any of your interactions ever, Algernon seems shaken when you ask that. Shooketh. Sh <laughs> he says, why, why that card? Does it matter? You're so confident you're going to win. What does it matter what I ask for? It matters to me. We need it because reasons. That's The card is special to me. Uh... At, at this point, Frank is probably going to be legitimately a little bit taken aback, because I think to this point, Algernon has literally just been the face of villainy to him. It's been this, this is the person <laughs> who just stands in my way and mocks me at every turn and makes me feel inadequate, and now suddenly it's like, uh, mm. Is it, is it a memento from mom or something? Is this what this is going to? This is that one. This is that one fucking throwaway line I made in our first interaction, isn't it? Oh fuck! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need a second. Do you mind if I just talk with these with these few for a second? I'll come back to you. Just, just, just give me a second. Whatever. You know, it's the least you can do after you made me piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> he turns his back on you. So look, we we need this card, right? I feel bad-ish for the guy and all, but this is kind of a matter of survival for us. Well, I don't feel bad, bad at all. I'll wedge him over a picture of his dead mom if you need me to. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the guy's a grade-A asshole. Like, I, I seriously want nothing more than to see him suffer, but as someone that is trying really damn hard to hold on to what they've got left of people important to him, I... I don't know. This is this is getting in my head. I can take the lead on this if you want, because I get it. He's sad, but here's the thing: he'll be sad and he'll still be okay because he's still some rich guy's kid. If we don't get this, we are fucked, and then we'll have nothing, and then also probably be dead. I vote we go for this. We do what we got to do, but I'm gonna see if we can get that card back to him when we're done after. After it's been used to humiliate, I'm going to see if we can get this back. Okay. Is this what Bo puts you up to? You're you're here to take the last thing my mother ever gave me? What is What does she have against me? I never did anything to her. What the fuck? Bo is not after this because of you. I wasn't aware of the situation we're going into, and I know we don't see eye to eye, but I understand trying to hold on to someone that you feel like is slipping out of reach. So I'm stuck between a rock and an incredibly hard place right now. And I'm not, I'm not doing this out of, there are a lot of things I do out of malice to you, but this is not one of them. We're going to duel. If you win, I will never play this game again. And if we win, well, we'll decide what we're claiming when we've won. Well, I'm not going to lose. So I guess it doesn't matter. Would it make you feel better if I gave you your boa back? <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. Oh, God. Should've, I knew it. I knew you were going to pull some shit. Yeah, this, this, this is... Seven for Ed. Fifteen. Seventeen. Thirteen. 
So Algernon says, I hope you had fun beating up on those weak stock welcome decks that the company puts together to get kindergartners to getting addicted to the game because I actually brought a big boy deck. Big boy season. <laughs> it's not big boy season. <laughs> uh, he actually seems like he, like there's like he's using words of boasting, but his his you guys have totally let the air out of his balloon. Basically, he doesn't seem like fully into it now. And he says, I don't even need any particular synergies, combos. I don't need to control. I can just I can just do a classic good stuff. Haymaker deck. Ah. <sighs> And he plays his first card. Pain itself. Oh. Yeah. And the creature that rises up as he plays the card is a one of the forms, which takes the visage of a skinless or perhaps flayed person. Uh, just an absolute bloody mess of exposed musculature and hints of glinting white bone. All along it, there are like nails driven into This thing, it's like writhing in agony on the card art. It looks like something out of Hellraiser. uh, More specifically, a Phyrexian from Magic Gathering. (laughs) But, you know, small reference pools. Uh, This is the form of pain. No one actually knows what it really looks like. All of the forms are basically guesswork, except for the few lucky sentient creatures who have actually witnessed one in person. Quote unquote, lucky. Yeah. (laughs) But so most of this is just like, speculative or it's it's almost a crowdsourced religion in a way it's just like people imagining what these things would look like so that is what appears before you just like a skinless agonizing it's it's like a dark souls enemy <laughs> it's very bad um and it is your turn katarina okay i apologize in advance because i'm playing to character <laughs> but i'm going to rage I'm going to run up. I'm going to look at Algernon and say, did your dead mom give you this card too? And then oh. I'm going to shoot pain in the knee. Oh, that's so mean. 17. Yes, that hits. So 14 damage. Yikes. Yeah, you shoot uh, this thing in the knee and just like blood and flesh and bones explode out of it. Uh, and it just wails in terrifying agony. The episode of the anime that featured this thing was never localized. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Ash have so many Tauroses? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's a good ass joke. That's, that is a good deep cut. Uh, and it is Frank's turn. Frank is going to open up with uh, Dodgy Dave's House of Mirrors. Three illusory duplicates of Frank now. Um, they move with me, mimic my actions, and nothing has to happen until you try and attack one of the... G- attack Frank. Too many Franks. Too many Franks. Too many Franks. Too many Franks. I was just thinking that in my head. There are now too many Franks. <laughs> All right. It is now Algernon's turn. Uh, he kind of laughs to himself in a low, creepy way. Just like... <laughs> uh, all of these duplicates, all this strategy, all this posturing. Frank, I know you're not super familiar with the expensive cards, but pain itself... Doesn't really require much strategy. And the creature holds its arms aloft and a red wave of energy explodes out of it, sweeping through the room. And all of you are suddenly racked with exquisite agony. Mm. Take a D6 damage. Nobody can save and your armor does nothing. Oh. I took three. three. Does it reduce by half for Barbarian? No, it's psychic. Okay, three damage for Frank. All right, uh, Lenore, it's your turn. This skinless monster is going to make you suffer to death. It's not even going to hit you or do any magic or anything. Just being in its presence is killing you. Is it, it's humanoid, right? Yeah, it's like a seven foot tall humanoid, basically. I think you're going to try and crown of madness on it, but I'm going to wait to use that and see if I have something better. I'm going to try and mind spike it because my most powerful thing and I want it to go away. He actually has really bad stats because it's because it is a being of infinite suffering. It's like a pain boy. Yeah, it actually has extremely bad stats. So I was banking on. Oh, thank God. Uh, Eleven. Don't hurt me no more. Eleven. All right, Ed, your turn. Ed is going to keep his distance to start. He's going to move in relatively close to where Katarina is, line up, and just try to just take a shot with his pistol at Payne's shoulder. 
Mm. 11. Nope, that misses. Yeah, that's all he does on his turn. All right, Katarina. All right, I'm going to spend a key point to use three attacks. And when I do that, I'm going to be like, oh, you think you know pain? Oh, I'll put you in ankle rock. So 16, 21, and 24. Wowie, all hits. <laughs> 15, so 23. I don't want to put him in ankle lock. <laughs> all right. He's still standing, but I want to do it anyway. All right, so you're just climbing all over this, like, basically, uh, Attack on Titan, motherfucker. <laughs> it's just, but <laughs> well, I'm just gonna punch him in a kneecap a lot. Then if it doesn't work, where I shot him. Okay, yeah, just uh, nice. Uh, Frank, it's your turn. Uh, Frank is gonna try and use Total the Dead. So Wisdom save against fifteen, negative two. Well, this thing is not very wise. Um, nope. <laughs> its entire existence is suffering. Same. 2d8 <laughs> oh, has, this thing's taken damage hasn't it yeah it has so it's 2d12 five five damage all right not very much so the bell rings out but this time the creature does not crumble to dust <laughs> um and it is algernon's turn again and he says i was really hoping this would have been more challenging i thought i'd get to show off a couple of my other really cool cards but take another pain wave i guess d6 for everybody uh, another three to frank Four. Four as well. Yeah. And I mean, in character, it's excruciating. It's like specifically the way the game is programmed is like he's modded it to access the memory of the worst pain you've ever felt and play that back. It's a real dick move. Uh, Lenora? Does he ever move? Does he ever move? No, I'm going to save that spell slot. He's just standing there, just bl- emanating pain. I'm going to try Frostbite because it's a cantrip and I'm saving my spell slot for something fun later. Mm hmm. Uh, so, let's see, constitution saving throw. Six. No, ma'am. Oops. So, seven damage, and cold damage, and if he, may, I don't think the pain wave counts as a weapon, does it? No. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Mm. He's frosty. All right, he's very frosty. Probably hurts because he has no skin. Once, once Ed sees that he has a bit of an opening, he's going to move in and then try to uh, make an attack with the knife. 21 that hits so that's gonna be enshrouded with booming blade again and because there's an ally within this range it counts as a sneak attack damage so it's d4 plus d6 plus d8 plus 4 16 damage we're about to paint a picture here ed sees an opportunity when when katarina kind of has him kind of grappled somewhat katarina's grappling him lenora froze part of him yeah and ed is going to swirl the the dagger he has stab it around uh, the side of his torso and try to pull up and through to basically do as well as he can to cut its upper body in half off from the rest of him. Wow. Ed, you nearly sever the thing at the torso with your dagger and uh, the thing like hangs half together before collapsing backwards and turning into pixels and floating away. But it's it's like nearly headless Nick, but like his torso <laughs> <laughs> nearly torso less sad boy. Pain. Um, and yeah, he like falls over with like a gurgling groan and collapses to the ground and like blood splashes everywhere. It's like really M-rated. That's traumatizing. Yeah, for like a kid's car game, it's intense. And Algernon says, huh, oh, we'll get to see another one. That's fun. It's a fun game, isn't it, Frank? Fun is a word for it. <laughs> hey, why are you such an asshole? He actually like looks down as if he's thinking about it. And then he says... Oh, look, just what I wanted. And he plays another card, and this time it is a a silver-clad uh, knight with a big shield and a huge broadsword in the other hand. He looks gold trim on the armor, like no tactical use, but you, you don't actually see a person inside. It just seems like this shining knight, and it's like wreathed in fire. And he says, how appropriate. Victory itself. Still didn't explain why you're such a dick. Um, <laughs> let's, let's use the same order. Katarina, it's your turn. Okay. I will use another key point to make three attacks. So 26, 21, 17. 26 misses, 21 misses, 17 misses. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, no. Frank, your turn. Victory itself. A silver clad knight wreathed in fire. So... I'm I'm gonna use a uh, lightning bolt because 
Uh, right now, that seems smart. Uh, deck save against 15. I think he's got really good stats. Yeah! Um, mm, what is that number? How many that's... zeros? Okay, so that's uh, 1,000... Uh, is that a million and 16? Yeah, it's 10 million 16. Uh, I think that barely makes it for the check. <laughs> Victory itself saves. <laughs> Fuck. Ha! I'm stumped. I don't know about y'all. Ha! Skitch, you know about D&D rules. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Aldernon's turn. I'll have a better idea of what's going on once it does its thing and kills one of us. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you all roll me d20s? What are we rolling them for? One! All right, nobody else needs to roll because Katarina <laughs> botched. Five. They wouldn't have been good. <laughs> oh, we're all dead. Great. Season over. Uh, <laughs> this is actually great because Katarina said some real raw shit about his mom earlier. So victory itself turns on its heel, looks at Katarina, points its sword at you. And Algernon says, take it back. Take hey, what back? What you said about my mother? Oh, she's dead. Take it back. Seriously, don't, 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 don't fuck around with people's family life. Take it back. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. I'm sure, she was a wonderful lady. Sixty-six damage. What kind of damage? Uh, slashing. I survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you shouldn't, but because <laughs> barbarian, yeah, and that's a pretty high roll there, by the way. So, what the fuck is going on in here on this day? <laughs> I survived victory itself. An attack I specifically engineered to kill one of you on the spot, <laughs> Why? and Katarina, Katarina survives it. Fine, yeah, that seems unnecessary. Oh, wait, can I do something, like, all drunkly stumbling? I won't be like, what are we doing? I'm still here. We can still do this. I meant I'm Nexus and getting murdered because I keep saying shit. <laughs> Lenora, your turn. Oh, no. Skitch. Any, any great ideas, Skitch? Yeah, please, help. Help me. <laughs> Attacks don't hit it unless you crit, I suspect. And the save spells are useless against it yeah and it auto damages whoever rolls the lowest when it's its turn so i was just gonna say quickly like the reason maybe why it's attacking the person who rolls the lowest is because they're mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, furthest mm -hmm. from victory can i do stuff to algernon instead were you asking permission you're you're playing a character <sighs> Okay, because I, I, don't, I don't think I can do anything to Victory. I don't know what to do. My other idea was to try Crown of Madness on Algernon to make him stop <laughs> victorying us, to make him put the card away or something. I think, I think this is one of those Austin's going to wait and just be like, you do what you want to do. <laughs> All right, well, so instead of casting shit on Victory, I'm going to try to cast some shit on Algernon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try Crown of Madness. So, one humiliated my choice. I can see him. A wisdom saving throw, please. Twelve. No, ma'am. You are charmed. A twisted crown of jagged iron appears on your head and a madness glows in your eyes. Okay, so because this is a card game inside of a video game, the rules are a little weird, but I like where the flavor is. So here's what happens. A twisting crown appears on Algernon's head as you cast uh, Crown of Madness. And he is set into a berserker frenzy. He starts laughing and he starts dropping cards and just being like sputtering and muttering to himself under his breath. And he's just like, you don't, I'm going to win. You don't, fuck you, dad. I don't care. I'll just, I'll do it myself. You don't understand. And, he's, and he throws out a car down on the ground and uh, a creature rises up out of it. And it is avarice itself. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, okay. This is another hu humanoid uh, figure. Uh, its skin is, uh, it's like it's bleeding, but the blood is... Money. Yeah. Well, okay, Lauren, you want to DM for a while? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go? Why don't you describe him? What's he look like? He bleeds money. I just said it. <laughs> well, that's not it. I had more. <laughs> He's dressed like Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's canon now, so... <laughs> He shows up. <laughs> he shows up and elbow drops his jacket. 
I was gonna say he his torso is split in the middle, and it, there are teeth where like his ribs are teeth, and it's like his chest cavity is filled with gold coins, and he's like eating. Them. I like Austin. No, no. I like Austin's description. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's also Ric Flair. It could be all these things. <laughs> could it be both? And still on this madness grip, Algernon just starts paying life to draw cards. He drops his deck on the ground and just starts picking them up one after another. And there's like a life counter on the Jumbotron and it just starts going down. Ah, so at this point, even if we do nothing, he's probably going to lose very soon. He pays a life. He draws a card. He pays a life. He draws a card. He pays a life. He draws a card. Okay, um... Uh, I don't know what the equivalent is in Hollow Deck, but in Yu-Gi-Oh, it would be placing your hand on top of the deck. It is the I I I surrender. You have won. Oh snap! And Frank's no. Frank's gonna Frank's Frank's gonna surrender. God damn it, Frank! Stop being a good person. So as Algernon's like life total goes three, two, one. You concede. Yeah, Frank concedes. Famous for voicing Lenora Desmond on season four of Dice Funk, also Lavinia on season two, and Dora on season three. They were all a real stretch for me. <laughs> very well. Well, I would say they're all very small, but they're not. One is big. Oh, that one actually is a stretch. How is it? Living all my tall dreams. <laughs> nice. I'm here to talk about credits, including the music credits, which I'm going to do now. Do it. <laughs> we use New Jack Mantle, an arrangement of the mantle from Nights into Dreams. Music of Funk, an arrangement of Stage 1 Gotham City from Batman for the NES, and Linear Groove, an arrangement of A-Type and B-Type from Tetris. Those, that's all the music, because the wrestling arc is over now. Aren't you happy? Yeah, I like all that music. It's very good. I do too, but I imagine it's hard for you to like edit. My life is editing hell. Do you want to do other credits? Okay, yeah. Executive producers for February 2018. I'm going to start. Uh, Ex Dolores. Kerstin Haslinger. Joseph Tombrello. Jade. Arna Helgadotir. <laughs> Helga daughter? Helga daughter? Yeah, like John's son is John's son, Helga's daughter. Oh. It's, it's a true. Norse thing. Okay, your turn. Brent. The Cult of Gorfanax. Paul Mullen. Dr. Goatman. Toshiro Kuru. Andrew Grossin. Levi the Young. Kevin Dobbins. Anthony Sauvier. Morgan Rapp. Jay Logan. The cast of Dungeons the Gathering. Madison Lilith McKenzie. Notorious Stoltz, or Stoltzy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Victoria Melito. Scotty Vilhard. Aline. Majin. Kritarion. Krita- Ren. Einar Johansson. Carter Rayner. Major Tem. Matthew B. Hare. Jorgen Indy Monster. Winewick Ford. Josie Gazay. Razumi Yuzura. Albert West. Jason. Ken Fursell. Eleanor Nonantesis Periton. Scott Cummings. Starlight Glimmer did nothing wrong. Juman Jack. Mel Teach. Arjun de Koenig. Grimlock. John Potts. Dawson Parr. Noah Sudret. Zephosaurus. Elderly Goose. Salad Child. Seraph Stone. Thorstein Gross. Devin Smith. Caster UK. Aki Savalainen. The Paladin's Wife. Florian H. Please give Johnny a hug. <laughs> we always do. Junk 2.0. The Hat Cells. Dominic Bowden. Melissa Nielsen. Don. Eugene T. Connor Reynolds. Pruitt Holcomb. Artemis BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Bristol. Francois V. Shyness. Dennis Pancake Detlefsen. Miko from Finland. Dennis Bengson. Josh Mosier. And Diego Vandane. 
Allison Ansel, Sydney Marsing, Just a Jester, Savarden Akrasimova, Brady Horner, Kitty Foe, James Neely, Marissa Donaldson, M. Joe, Lana Seawolf, Toby Gleason Stack, Matthew Weber, Melissa Booker, Cameron Abbas, Dylan, Anna Stillfire, Sean the host of Funk Dunk Place, Harrison Andrew, Christopher Charlow, Jorit, Vigor Arnston, Cody Jackson, and August Rue. We did it. We did all the names. Thank you for 2018. Wow. Happy wow. February. <laughs> uh, what else do we have to talk about in this part? Sketch is bandcamp, bandcamp.com slash sketch, something like that. Laura is Laura K. Buzz everywhere. Yep. Kotaku.co.uk. Chris, he does stuff. Weekly, Weekly Monger Recap. <laughs> that should be his new fucking catchphrase. This is Chris. He does stuff. <laughs> um, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean. Is there anywhere where we are You have a Patreon. I do. Patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. That's where I live now. And then if you want to harass me, I'm just very delicious on Twitter. No one knows how to spell that. R-A-W-R-G-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Wow, I learned a lot. Um, that's the whole thing, right? Uh, special thanks to all the cats. Mm-hmm. Mine and Laura's and any other cats about. Anna, Smudge. Zelda. What's the hedgehog? Oh, um. Bscotch. Well, that's her nickname. She really is the Duchess Karina of Butterscotch. A not so special thanks, because she is very rude. Special thanks. I I take a lot of inspiration from her rude dude. Okay, yeah, that helps you with your role playing. Also, thanks to Echo, who is a dog who's in my house as we record this. He's very good at fetch.